You've been grinding away in the gym, doing set after set of bicep curls, but every time you check the mirror, the growth just isn't showing up. It's one of the most frustrating feelings in fitness. You're putting in all the work, but it feels like you're getting nowhere. But what if I told you that some of the most popular bicep exercises you see everyone doing are actually some of the least effective, and that you could be getting way better results by making a few simple swaps? Today we're cutting through all the bro science. We're digging into lab reports, EMG analysis, and the latest research on biomechanics to build the ultimate science-backed tier list for bicep exercises. By the end of this, you'll know exactly which moves build monster arms and which ones are basically a waste of your precious gym time. All right, before we start ranking, we need to set some ground rules. How do we scientifically decide if a bicep exercise is any good? We're judging them on three key things. First, muscle activation. For this, we're looking at electromyography, or EMG studies. These hook up electrodes to the muscle to see how much it's firing during an exercise. More electrical activity generally means more muscle fibers are working, which is a fantastic starting point for growth. A well-known ACE-sponsored study, for instance, tested eight different curls and found a very clear winner for peak activation. Second, biomechanics for hypertrophy. This is where things get really interesting. We're looking at an exercise's tension profile. Does it challenge your bicep when the muscle is fully stretched out? The latest research makes it clear that this stretch-mediated hypertrophy is a huge driver of muscle growth. So any exercise that puts the bicep under tension at long muscle lengths gets a massive thumbs up from us. Third, potential for progressive overload. To grow, you have to keep challenging your muscles, right? That means adding more weight or more reps over time. An exercise is only as good as your ability to progress with it safely. The easier it is to steadily overload, the better. So, with our criteria set, activation, stretch, and overload, let's get into the rankings, starting at the very bottom. The F tier, complete waste of time. These are the exercises that, based on the science, just don't have much going for them. Honestly, you could drop these from your routine right now and you wouldn't miss a thing. First up is the waiter curl. This one feels more like a party trick than a proper lift. You hold a dumbbell flat in your palm like you're carrying a tray of drinks. The goal is to take your forearms out of it, but what it really does is create an awkward motion that puts a ton of strain on your wrists. Plus, it's incredibly hard to add weight to. There are way better ways to isolate your biceps that won't put your wrists at risk. Straight to the F tier. Next, we have the drag curl. It looks kind of cool, and the idea is that by dragging the bar up your body, you keep the tension on the biceps. The problem? Biomechanics. As you pull your elbows back, you're shortening the bicep at the shoulder while you're flexing it at the elbow. The result is that the muscle's actual length barely changes, meaning you miss out on a full range of motion and that all-important stretch. Compared to a standard curl, it's a poor choice for stimulating growth. F tier it is. The C tier. Better options exist. These exercises aren't terrible, but they each have a pretty big flaw that holds them back. First in this category is the spider curl. For this, you're lying face down on an inclined bench with your arms hanging straight down. Having your arms out in front of your body like this puts the bicep in a very shortened position. This means you get a really intense squeeze at the top of the curl, but you're missing out on a meaningful stretch at the bottom, which we know is a huge trigger for growth. Because it misses that key element, there are just much better options out there. C tier. Next up, resistance band curls. Look. Bands are great for warm-ups or when you're on the road. But for your main bicep work, they have one major problem, the resistance curve. At the bottom of the curl, where your muscle is stretched, the band offers very little tension. The resistance only really ramps up at the very top of the rep. 
For building muscle, you want consistent tension through the whole movement, especially at the bottom. Bands just don't give you that. C tier. Welcome to B tier, home of the exercises that are popular for a reason, but aren't quite perfect. These will definitely help you build bigger biceps, but they have drawbacks. Kicking off B tier, and this might be a little controversial, is the classic standing barbell curl. For decades, this has been hailed as the king of mass builders, and its potential for progressive overload is awesome. You can keep slapping more weight on that bar, but it has two flaws. First, like a lot of free weight curls, the tension is uneven. There's much less tension at the bottom of the movement, and it drops off again at the very top. Second, the straight bar can be tough on the wrists and elbows for some people, and it's way too easy to start using momentum and cheating the weight up. An easy bar helps with comfort, but it has the same tension problem. It's a good exercise, but its flaws keep it in B tier. Next in B tier is the chin up. What, a chin up? Yep. EMG studies show that chin ups trigger huge bicep activation, sometimes just as much as isolation curls. It's a compound lift, so you can overload it like crazy by adding weight. So why isn't it S tier? Because for most of us, our biceps aren't the first thing to give out. Your back muscles, especially your lats, are probably going to tap out long before your biceps get the stimulus they need for maximum growth. It's a phenomenal back builder that gives your biceps a great workout, but it's not the best for pure bicep size. A solid B tier pick. The A tier. The elite muscle builders. Okay, now we're talking. These A tier exercises are fantastic choices and should absolutely be a part of your arm day routine. First in A tier is the inclined dumbbell curl. This move is a masterclass in biomechanics. By leaning back on an inclined bench, your arms hang behind your body, putting the long head of the bicep into a deep stretch. As we've covered, training a muscle under load in this stretch position is a powerful recipe for growth. One recent study even found that inclined curls produced more growth in the upper part of the bicep when compared to preacher curls. This exercise is amazing for targeting the long head, which builds that bicep peak and the bench keeps you honest by making it hard to cheat. A tier, no question. Next we have the hammer curl. The hammer curl, where you use that neutral thumbs up grip, is special. It actually activates the main bicep muscle slightly less than a standard palm up curl. So why is it in A tier? Because it absolutely demolishes a different muscle that's key for big arms, the brachialis. The brachialis is a muscle that sits right under your bicep. When you build it up, it literally pushes your bicep up from underneath, making your peak look taller and adding serious overall thickness to your arm. It's the secret weapon for truly impressive arms. A tier. We finally made it. The S tier. These are the exercises that the science tells us are objectively the best for building your biggest, strongest biceps. Our first S-tier champion is the Preacher Curl. Whether you use a dumbbell, a barbell, or a machine, the Preacher Curl is king when it comes to isolation. It locks your upper arm in place, making it almost impossible to cheat. More importantly, it creates incredible tension through the lower and middle part of the repetition. A recent study found the preacher curl resulted in significantly more growth in the lower part of the bicep compared to the inclined curl. So while you may not get the same deep behind the body stretch as an inclined curl, its ability to isolate the muscle and build that lower bicep fullness is unmatched. A clear S tier choice. And now the single best bicep exercise, according to EMG research, the concentration curl. I know, this might be a shocker. A lot of people see this as a light finishing move, but the science says otherwise. That landmark ACE-sponsored study we mentioned earlier, it compared eight popular bicep exercises and found that the concentration curl produced significantly more muscle activation than any other exercise they tested. 
The secret is pure, unfiltered isolation. Bracing your arm against your leg removes your shoulder and any momentum from the equation. All the force goes directly into the bicep. For hitting the most muscle fibers possible, the concentration curl is the undisputed champ, S-tier. So that's the list, the definitive science-backed ranking of bicep exercises. The main takeaway here is that your workouts should be built around those S-tier and A-tier movements. A killer bicep workout could start with a heavy preacher curl for that lower bicep fullness, followed by an inclined dumbbell curl to hit the long head in a deep stretch, and finish with a concentration curl for maximum activation. When you start picking exercises based on science instead of just popularity, you can finally stop spinning your wheels and start building the arms you've been working for. If this video helped you out, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe for more science-based fitness guides. Now I want to hear from you, what's your favorite bicep exercise and where did it end up on our list? Drop a comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.